Hello everyone. In this video, I will be explaining you about transamination reaction. Now, what is transamination reaction? So, the transamination reaction, it involves transfer of amino group from one amino acid into an alpha keto acid so that once the alpha keto acid re uh, receives that amino group, it will be converted into amino acid. It looks like little complicated here, so but let me simplify this particular process. Now, we all know that we have 20 standard amino acids. Out of these 20 standard amino acids, 18 of them can undergo transamination reaction. Now, two amino acids, they don't undergo transamination reaction, but they will undergo deamination reaction and those amino acids are lysine and threonine. Except lysine and threonine, all other 18 amino acids, they can undergo transamination reaction. Now let me explain you how exactly this transamination reaction goes on. So in order to explain that to you, I have taken aspartate as an example. So I have written aspartate structure here. So this is the structure of aspartate. So it has alpha carbon in the center. Then it has carboxyl group, amino group, then the side chain of aspartate that is CH2 and COO minus. Aspartate is a negatively charged amino acid. Now this aspartate, if it undergoes transamination reaction, so the aspartate is an amino acid, so it is going to give its amino group because this is a transamination reaction. As the name says transamination, so that means there is a transfer of amino group. So here is the amino group of aspartate. This amino group has to, be, has to be transferred. So where this amino group will be transferred? So this amino group, it will be transferred to an alpha keto acid. And example for alpha keto acid, which I have written here is an alpha keto glutarate. As you all know, alpha keto glutarate is a TCS cycle intermediate. So that alpha keto glutarate, which is an alpha keto acid, because you can see the keto group here, so it is going to receive this amino group. So amino group will be transferred from aspartate into alpha, uh, alpha carbon, uh, carbon of alpha keto glutarate molecule. Okay. So who is going to do this job? So who is going to transfer this amino group from aspartate onto alpha keto glutarate? This job it will be done by an enzyme called AST that is aspartate transaminase because aspartate is an amino acid its amino group is transferred to alpha keto glutarate that's why the name of the enzyme is aspartate transaminase aspartate transaminase is found both in the mitochondrial cytoplasm and also in the mitochondrial matrix in different tissues now what this enzyme does it is going to transfer this amino group from aspartate onto alpha keto glutarate. So once this happens, now the alpha keto glutarate, once it receives, receives this amino group, that alpha keto glutarate will be converted to glutamate. So now the alpha keto glutarate will be converted to glutamate. So your amino group is here in the glutamate. So glutamate is an amino acid which is basically alpha keto glutarate after receiving this amino group that's how you got glutamate there now what happened to your aspartate after losing this amino group so if this amino group is taken out of aspartate your aspartate will be converted to oxaloacetate and that's an alpha keto acid oxaloacetate is an alpha keto acid so all this particular job it will be done by enzyme aspartate transaminase so i'll write now the reaction lines here so aspartate is converted to oxaloacetate while your alpha keto glutarate is converted to glutamate molecule okay let me explain you one more time so aspartate is an amino acid so enzyme here is aspartate transaminase so what it does it is going to transfer amino group of aspartate onto an alpha keto acid and an alpha keto acid down here is alpha keto glutarate. It is going to receive this amino group. Once alpha keto glutarate receives its amino group, it is going to be converted into glutamate. So what happened here? Amino group that was present in aspartate is now present in glutamate molecule. 
Now what happened to the aspartate after losing that, that amino group? So the aspartate is converted to its corresponding keto acid that is oxaloacetate. So the keto acid of aspartate is an oxaloacetate and the keto acid of glutamate is alpha ketoglutarate. So the only difference between glutamate and alpha ketoglutarate is this amino group and the difference between aspartate and oxaloacetate is the amino group. So this is how amino group it will be transferred from one amino acid into an alpha keto acid and that alpha keto acid which receives the amino group that becomes a new amino acid that is glutamate here in this particular example and the amino acid that loses amino group it becomes uh, its corresponding keto acid and that is oxaloacetate in this example aspartate is an amino acid oxaloacetate is its corresponding keto acid glutamate is a new amino acid that has made that has been synthesized now its corresponding keto acid is alpha keto glutarate now in order to do all this function aspartate transaminase it needs a coenzyme and the coenzyme for aspartate transaminase is PLP and that is pyridoxal phosphate. Note that this pyridoxal phosphate it is an active form of vitamin B6 and that is pyridoxine. Now pyridoxal phosphate it is acting as a coenzyme for hundreds of enzymes in our body and transamination reaction is one of the requirement where there is pyridoxal phosphate is required that is one of the function of pyridoxine that is vitamin B6 in our body. So the deficiency of vitamin B6, B6 can decrease transamination reactions ok. So this is how a transamination reaction will go on. Let me give you another example in uh, for transamination and that is alanin transaminase enzyme that is ALT. So instead of aspartate let us take an example of alanin now and see what happens to understand much better about the concept that I have explained so far. Now I have written alanin structure here. So alanin is basically it has alpha carbon it is an amino acid so it has alpha carbon in the center carboxyl group amino group and methyl group there. Now this alanine if it has to undergo transamination reaction it needs an enzyme called ALT and that is alanine transaminase. So this particular transaminase is specific for transamination of alanine so that is why it is alanine transaminase again as with aspartate transaminase alanine transaminase is also found in the cytoplasm and in the mitochondria. So we consider alanine transaminase it a little more liver specific than other tissues but we do find alanine transaminase in other tissues too. Now what this alanine transaminase does just like aspartate transaminase what it does it is going to take out amino group from alanine and put it onto alpha ketoglutarate and now alpha ketoglutarate after receiving that amino group it will be converted to glutamate and your alanine after losing amino group to alpha ketoglutarate it will be converted into pyruvate now the pyruvate is a keto acid now alanine is going to be converted into keto acid that is pyruvate and alpha ketoglutarate which is a keto acid it will be converted into glutamate molecule now the enzyme that is catalyzing this reaction is alanine transaminase enzyme and this alanine transaminase again it as with any other transamination reaction it needs pyridoxal phosphate which is a derivative of vitamin B6 that is pyridoxine active form of pyridoxine is pyridoxal phosphate. One another thing that I would like to say here is all transamination reactions they are reversible reactions it means as I have written here, so I have shown bidirectional arrows. It means what I have explained is when alanine conversion of alanine into pyruvate, conversion of aspartate into oxaloacetate, while alpha ketoglutarate is going into glutamate formation. Now, when there is a if there is a need for need to synthesize alanine in our cells, if there is a need to synthesize aspartate, and if there is corresponding keto acids are available, so you can run the reaction from right to left side. That means if pyruvate is sufficiently available and if glutamate is sufficiently available in our cells if there is a need for alanine so you can use glutamate as an amino acid take the amino group from glutamate 
put it on to keto group of pyruvate and that's when pyruvate will be converted to alanine so and your glutamate after losing this amino group to pyruvate it will be converted into alpha keto glutarate molecule so it means you can run this reaction in a reverse order also and that reaction will be catalyzed by the same enzymes that is if in this case it is alanine transaminase in aspartate case it can be aspartate transaminase like that any other transamination as long as we have those 18 transaminases except lysine and threonine okay so this this is how transamination reactions will go on one more point that you need to remember here is in all 18 transamination reaction the reaction that is going on below here that is conversion of alpha ketoglutarate to glutamate or glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate it remains same for all transamination reaction only thing that changes in transamination reaction is the amino acid above here that is alanine going into pyruvate aspartate going into oxalocetate like that so you can put put any amino acid here and that is a out of 20 amino acid 18 amino acids you can put here and change them to their corresponding keto acid what remains same in uh, transamination reaction is alpha ketoglutarate to glutamate or glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate basically the denominator here it remains same for all transamination reaction the uh, numerator and basically the reaction that is going on up here that is the one which changes in transamination reaction so this is all about transamination reaction and also the tracking of number of carbons and nitrogen if, uh, if the questions are related with that. So if nitrogen, if it is labeled here in alanine, so the at the end of the reaction by ALT, you are going to find that nitrogen in glutamate. That's how you can track the nitrogen. Or if you label, radial label carbons in alanine, at the end of this transamination reaction, these carbons will be found in pyruvate or like alpha ketoglutarate carbons all the carbons in alpha ketoglutarates they are the ones which are found in glutamate so like this we can track carbons and nitrogen which are participating in transamination reaction so this is in short about all transamination reactions that are going on in our body hope this video has helped you in understanding uh, transamination reaction so if you like the video, so kindly share with uh, share these videos with your friends so that they are benefit they they will be benefited with these videos. Thanks again for watching.